<laughs> Tiger fans, Mark Fitzpatrick with the Tiger Club of Kansas City. It is Tuesday, November 28th, and our very special guest today from 810 WHB, host of the Border Patrol, Stephen St. John. Stephen, thanks for coming out. About to celebrate with this 10 and 2 Tiger football team. Well, what a great time to be a football fan in Kansas City. We've got the Chiefs, uh, as always, in first place in Mizzou, uh, 10 and 2. And tonight we find out uh, where they are in these college football rankings. I expect them to. Uh, be number nine again, and then uh, how exciting is it going to be on Sunday to find out the bowl destination? So yeah, if you're a if you're a Chiefs and Mizzou football fan, in the name of Nick Bolton, it's a wonderful time to be alive. <laughs> I know you picked the Tigers to have a winning record going into the season, but you didn't see this good of a season. I don't think. No, before. no, I did. Uh, None of us did. Thanks to my friends at DraftKings Sportsbook, it has been a wonderful season because I picked the over. Uh, you know, I thought eight and four. And then if everything went right, nine and three, uh, I did not anticipate ten and two, you know, because I thought you know winning at Kentucky was going to be a, a, a tough deal, based on the last two uh, games against uh, Tennessee. I thought that was going to be an uphill climb. I figured they lose at Georgia. Um, I thought K State was going to be what it was down 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 to the wire, um, and LSU was going to be a tough game. Uh, but man, you know, I know that they came up short against LSU and uh, uh, in Georgia, but Winning the KC game in a 61-yard field goal, beating the hell out of uh, Tennessee uh, and and Kentucky, uh, that was the difference. And so, uh, you know, last year, I thought they should have been an eight or nine win team. Yeah. You know what yeah, you know what true. happened in Auburn and what happened against Kentucky, right. uh, but you know things finally went Mizzou's way, and uh, and they were able to win those close games and and finish with ten wins, and it's been awesome. You've talked about him a lot on the show this year, but what a story with Cody Schreiber. You know, like I told you, if, it, if somebody would have given you this treatment for a movie and said, hey, this is this is what the story is going to be, and he's going to end up as being the leading rusher in the SEC and an All-American, you'd say, well, that's not realistic. That couldn't happen. A D2 walk-on going to Mizzou, he's not going to lead the league in rushing, and he's not going to be uh, at least uh, in the Heisman buzz at the end of the season. And on top of that, you hear him talk after games or in press conferences, it's like if you're a football coach and you went to a laboratory and built a football player, inside and out, heart, mind, everything, it would be Cody Schrader. I mean, you talk about what he's meant to that team and also what he's meant to other D2 athletes that, that maybe they've doubted themselves and think, you know what, maybe I, I, you know, I can't make it at the D1 level. How many kids do you think have watched him, not just in football, and decided, you know what, I bet I can make it. I'm going to bet on myself. And it's inspired them, and he's taken ownership in that. And I think that's a really cool story that transcends even what he's done on the football field. That's a great perspective on it. I'm going to turn to basketball. They're off to a little bit of a rough start. I thought you had a great uh, comparison today, though. The Chiefs simplified their offense Sunday with fewer players. Mizzou's going to find out who their top eight are, and yeah. I think when they simplify, they'll be okay. Yeah, I just think with Dennis Gates going there, I mean, you got what 12 or 13 guys on the roster that legitimately are battling for playing time. Uh, he's trying to mix and match and figure things out, not only who the best players are, but how they play together, which is so important in basketball, the right chemistry, right? And so going through that, look, losing to Jackson State was awful. Nobody wants that, right? But you'll take some bumps in the road in the non-con, uh, so you hit the ground running in, in conference play. Um, the only tough thing is, I mean, they've got, they've got KU, they've got Illinois, they've got some tough games in the non-con. But uh, figuring out who the best players are and what the best fits are as far as chemistry and, and how they play together, I think is hugely important. We're starting to see that. I think they're starting to see a separation of, of maybe the top eight or nine guys. And when you, when you melt that down uh, and get to that rotation, I, I talk a lot about this with, with Jared Sutton. It's, it's, it's not just who the best players are, it's how they play together and what guys make, you know, I thought Kobe Brown – grew so much as a player because he was always good and he had a, an all-around game but his last year he realized i got to be the guy that takes the big shot and i thought dennis gates had to kind of coax that out of him you're the big dog you know who's going to be the guy whether it's sean east or nick Conner or whatever who's the guy that you want with the ball in his hands who's the guy when you need a defensive side what's your best defensive team i think he's figuring that out honing everything to where he's got uh, a better 
grasp or feel of, of what his team can do, and hopefully you'll see that work out better in conference play than uh, than what we've seen so far in the in the non -con. And we know he's got a great recruiting class coming in. Yeah. So I want to turn to the Chiefs real quick. Did they get it fixed Sunday? You know what? I think it's – I don't want to oversimplify things, but Rasheed Rice is your best playmaker at wide receiver. Travis Kelsey is still the best tight end in football, and Isaiah Pacheco is a hell of a runner, right? A young, fresh running back that – I think is underutilizing the passing game. He had five catches in this last game, so I love that. But also, they were better at third and short, right? right? And better at the goal line. What did they do? They turned around, handed the ball to Isaiah Pacheco, who's an angry runner, and ran behind that uh, terrific interior offensive line. Sometimes simple is better. Yeah. And I think now that they, they understand, feed the ball to Pacheco, feed the ball to Kelsey, feed the ball to Rasheed Rice, good things are going to happen. And like a running back, what do they always say? I need more carries to get going, to get the flow going, right? If you're a receiver and you're out there for three or four snaps, then you come out, and I think that's happened a few times with Rasheed Rice. He makes a big play, then you don't see him for another quarter. Leave him out there. He got 10 targets. He got eight catches, 107 yards and a touchdown. The more he's out there, the better the chemistry is going to be chemistry again with him and Mahomes. Uh, and so, uh, whittle it down. And I think they've identified who the playmakers are. All right. Saban, you're a great friend of the club. Thank we you. appreciate it. He's one of the best. Host of the Border Patrol, 6 to 10, Monday through Friday. Hey, folks, next week we have a very special program here at the flea market. John Sunbold, Missouri basketball legend and SEC analyst. We haven't had him here in person for several years, so please come on out to the flea market and listen to John. For more information on uh, upcoming events and speakers, you can go to kctigerclub.com. Don't forget we'll have a happy hour on January 9th at the Chicken and Pickle in Overland Park. Everybody have a great week. We'll see you next week.